Hello everybody and welcome back to Chill Vibes Only. Today's video is going to be on the four horsemen and their anecdotes. So this is a theory and a concept that I learned from the Gottman Institute. Um, I highly recommend you guys check out their Instagram page and their resources because they have a lot of really great information on relationships and how to make relationships last and conflict resolution. And through them I learned about the four horsemen and basically what that is, is the four different ways that we in our relationships can respond to conflict um, that aren't necessarily helpful or are going to help us progress our relationships and build healthy, long-lasting ones. So I'm going to talk about the four horsemen today and what I've learned through the Gottman Institution for handling those situations and tips and strategies that you can use to avoid falling into the traps of some of them and how you should respond or react instead because conflict is going to arise in our relationships regardless and that's something I've learned recently and it's really helped me. I used to try to avoid conflict and I'll talk about one of the horsemen that I was such a, a guilty party of all the time but that's not healthy and it's not realistic. Uh, I think when we change our mindset and our thought patterns around conflict and just accept that conflict is a normal healthy part of any relationship obviously there's a balance you don't want to be constantly in a state of conflict um, but acknowledging that every time from time to time it's going to show up uh, and dealing with it and being human and recognizing that we make mistakes other people make mistakes um, and when we can just be open and vulnerable and honest and communicate um, in ways that are kind we can help eliminate and and also uh, close those conflict gaps a lot quicker and healthier and it can make our relationships stronger and better. So we'll get into today's video. So there's four different horsemen. The first one is criticism. So criticism is basically when if you're in conflict or if you've been wronged or you feel angry or upset about something with your partner, your first reaction is to go into like criticism um, and attacking that person's like personality or attacking them for their character. Um, and that's not always the way that you're gonna get across to someone. Um, also too, when people feel attacked, they shut down. So criticism isn't a way that you know, you're gonna be able to work through that conflict. What you wanna do if you find that you're someone when you get upset or angry that you just attack someone's personality and you say things like, well, you're messy and you never clean up the kitchen and you're a slob and you know whatever kind of criticism that you're giving your partner. The way to work through that is to think about using I statements and talking about how you feel, not necessarily saying it's a fact. So instead of saying like, you're messy, you're a slob, you never clean up in the kitchen, you could say something like, you know, I feel like I'm always the one who has to unload the dishwasher or wipe down the kitchen sink and I feel like I'm taking on a lot of work around the house or, or with cleanup and it's starting to get draining for me and I really would appreciate if you could help out with that more because I'm starting to get frustrated. Um, and then that person doesn't feel like you're saying like, you're a slob, you're not cleaning, you're not helping. They're like, oh, this is how my partner feels and now I can soak that in. I'm not gonna be defensive because they're not telling me something about my personality or my character. Um, they're just telling me how they feel. And it's not a fact, it's just a feeling. And then they can address it from their perspective and meet somewhere in the middle. Um, and it just kind of helps de-escalate the contact and open up a conversation instead of building up walls, which criticism can often do. Okay, so then the second one is contempt. And that's when you attack someone's sense of worth and like you use more of like a authority complex. So, so in those cases, you might find yourself saying like, I'm the one who pays for this house and this kitchen and I do all these things and so it's your responsibility to clean the kitchen. Um, and you're kind of insulting someone by saying like, you know, I'm above you, I have all this power and you don't and so I'm going to make you feel bad about it and use my power as a way to um, control the situation and that's also not nice and not receptive for people because then it creates a power dynamic and it doesn't make your partner feel good um, so in these cases you actually want to try to incorporate more self-appreciation for your partner um, and think about all the wonderful things that they do so you can even out that power structure in that playing field and you don't feel the need to insult them or to use your authority or your power over them that and I say authority or power but like your perceived authority and power because um, it's not always the case, you might just be feeling that way, but it's using that to insult your partner is not going to get them to be more receptive to you and it's just going to hurt them more. So in those cases, you just want to remind your, yourself of your partner's like positive attributes and be grateful for them and think about ways that they do things that you know really bring joy and happiness into your life um, instead of focusing on the negative aspects that are going on in the relationship. 
Okay, and then the third one is defensiveness. Um, and this is one I definitely think I've been guilty of in the past. Um, not so much as the fourth one that I'm going to talk about. But basically, defensiveness is exactly what it sounds like, where you take the problem and then you turn it so you're the victim. Um, and you say, well, you know what? I didn't clean the kitchen, but, you know, you're the one who, who made the mess or, or you're the one who did all these things and it's not my responsibility to do this because you should be doing this just as much as I should. Um, and when you use defensiveness and you kind of reverse the role so that you become the victim, you're not acknowledging that your partner is upset about something, you're not taking ownership for that, um, and that's not going to help with your arguments or the conflict resolution. Um, oftentimes when you know we do something that upsets someone, even if it wasn't on purpose, we need to take accountability for our actions and a mindful apology and just taking accountability and saying like, you know what, that wasn't my intention, but also that wasn't my best moment there. That wasn't like something I'm proud of um, and I can do better next time and I'm going to take accountability and ownership and I learned from that um, and I'm really sorry about that and you know, in the future I'm going to do X, Y, and Z to correct that, but that really just like wasn't my best moment there. Um, like taking accountability and not falling into that victim mindset of being like, well, I only did this because you did that to me, um, is going to help just resolve the conflict a lot quicker. And then your partner can also maybe take ownership and accountability for some things too. And it allows you to meet in the middle. Um, when you defend yourself and you never acknowledge your partner's feelings, you never acknowledge how they feel and what they feel like you've done to wrong them. Um, it just creates this sense of like resentment and that just breeds in a relationship and then it's just going to keep coming up and up and up. Um, so really just learning to take accountability, um, acknowledging that you're human too, you're not going to be perfect, people make mistakes, uh, and as soon as we you know, take accountability, acknowledge them, apologize, and try to do better, um, the sooner your partner and you can kind of get back to a place of flow and extend that forgiveness and be able to move on and let go. Okay, and then the fourth and final one, which is one I am so, so, so guilty of um, and I'm constantly working on is stonewalling. So stonewalling is when you basically just retreat and you, you know, ignore and maybe you do the silent treatment and you never address the issue. So you just, someone's getting mad or you get upset and instead of saying, hey, this really hurt me or this is really bothering me, um, you just retreat and you don't say anything at all. And this can be helpful in times when like, you know, emotions are really high. So if you're in a heated debate with someone and you're not getting anywhere, um, you know, they talk about like green zone, yellow zone, red zone. If you're in the red zone with your partner, um, sometimes taking a break and saying, you know what, I need a break. Like we're not getting anywhere here and going your separate ways. And when you go your separate ways, taking time to do something that's self soothing for you. So like going for a walk, distracting yourself, doing a workout class, you know, reading a book, having a bath, but taking yourself out of that situation. Don't go, you know, talk about it to someone else or relive it in your head over and over again. You really just want to take a whole mental and physical break from it so that you can come back with a fresh perspective. Um, so stonewalling is when you, you know, go away and you let that go on repeat in your head and you never address it. Um, again, a place for resentment to build because your partner is not aware of it and you're not working towards any solution. If anything, you're just taking all of these things in your list that's kind of making you more and more angry with this person. So making an effort to take a break to, you know, release any of that kind of stress, do something that's going to get your mind off and then come back with a fresh perspective. It's going to help you engage in a more constructive conversation where, you know, you can use your I feel statements, you can express yourself and you can work towards a solution. Um, and you know, apologies and letting it go, um, is much better than just like tucking it down because the more you tuck down, you can't hold everything forever. It's going to get heavy. You're going to build resentment. Um, and you need to be able to talk and communicate to your partner about conflict. As I said at the beginning of this video, like conflict is such a natural and normal thing in every relationship. And the more that we just accept that it's going to be a part of a relationship and a part of life and like being a person on the planet, um, it sucks that you have to go through it and it doesn't feel nice, but it is a necessary part to living and having vulnerable and authentic relationships and conversations. And it's what makes your relationship stronger. So don't be afraid of conflict, guys. Try your best to, you know, figure out which one of these four horsemen or multiple ones that you fall into and then use those tips that I gave you to counteract um, and to, you know, show up better in your relationships and your partnerships. Um, this is for friendships, family, partners, like anybody, work, coworkers. Um, these tips can help you with communicating, apologizing, moving forward and not holding on to, you know, resentment and anger uh, and staying stuck in um, a conflict uh, cycle. So 
Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please give it a big thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe because that really helps this channel. And I will see you for another video shortly.